Oh, here we go. What year would it have been? Well, I was three years old, so that'd be 19... 50 years ago, no, just... No, it wasn't. It, was... it had to be before the war ended. Yeah, it probably was. 42 or 43. Yeah, as a little boy, you remember looking out that window? Out this window. Waiting for your Uncle Irwin to come home. Now this, so this house is built out of hand-hewed logs? Yeah, well that, that one there is about 10 inches deep, 6, 7 inches wide, and they put most of them in. My dad told me about this years ago, that it was made out of solid wood and then covered over. Now somebody's either, I hope they're restoring it. But they had clear boards, and then they had that asbestos shingle stuff, right? The back side of the house. This is looking down the road, the Union Hill Road. You can see where it had clear boards. Then they had that kind of a siding, asbestos looking shingle siding. But it's solid wood, hand hewed. If you look at the, at the window sills, they just chopped them off pretty crude, but. Yeah. Where are you? Oh, you're upstairs. Well, we'll come inside in a minute. See how the, the corners, each piece was what? Cut in half. And whatever you call that. Dovetail. Dovetail. This got wooden pegs in it or square nails? I couldn't tell. This is the front. How'd you get in? Oh. You can see where the second floor timbers were cut into the timber up there. This will show up. This is inside. These timbers, how wide are they? God, Must be 20, be 20 footers. At least 20, maybe more. They run all the way across. I will say they're 24 feet across there. I don't think this is going to show up very good. center chimney with a fireplace warming oven right and then down the road it appears that they cut into it and for a wood stove what's this look to be about 24 by 36, maybe? No, well, it's 24. Let me case off the other one. This side's got a fireplace. But it was in the center of the house. Yeah, you're right. 36. Yeah. Now, Ed and Anna lived here, right? Mm -hmm. From in the mid-twenties, I believe, till in the mid-forties. 
According to Berkeley, it was Anna bought the place and paid it off within three or four years. So basically, the kids all grew up in this place. This is going upstairs. I don't know if we can see it, but it's one big room with a knee, what, about a three foot knee wall? Looks like what? About six by eight timbers. And a chimney. Evidently, there must have been wood stoves up. Two windows on each end. This hasn't been all clear. You can see where they had the, some type of plaster against the wood. And then they put, uh, built it out and put laths on and plaster on top of that or some type of sheetrock board. window with a pile of rubble that evidently has come out of here. Looking back inside. You come up stairs over there in the corner. Went down solid, wasn't quick enough to catch the door. Some of that, because that's rotten on the bottom. Wonder how many years that's been there. Standing in the road. I don't know if you... bedroom. Wall came over to the fireplace and then that was kitchen on the back side of this. I'm standing in what was the living room. There was a small entryway coming through this door to the bricks and there was the dining room over there and this was the living room. This has square nails, has wooden pegs in the corners, no electricity, no bathroom, never did have any, doesn't have any now. Get away from the window. You can 
see where they tried to patch the cracks. What was the kitchen? That was the one and only door. Now, where did the garden used to be? Well, way down in, down in here, all of this is open. A well. Huh. Don't know what it is. Ha, I gotcha. And a snowflake. That's what you'd call the old fashioned way of doing it, right? right. Even before you had the individual. If we look closely, we could see a wooden peg. I think that's going to come out. This is the old James and Emma Lowell Smith house. This would have been where Anna grew up. Pretty well grown up. Fifteen years ago you could drive in here. used to be a, a porch across the front with a barn, if you look in the old pictures. The end, that goes into the kitchen. No door full of some kind of turd, maybe, I don't know, woodchuck, but the walls uh, look like uh, wood. Moving inside through a window. is on the back side. These evidently were bedrooms. On the front you had a kitchen living room. This is on the Union Hill Road installed. This little red house used to belong to William Smith. I'm not sure who owns it now. And to the left of this house, get by the truck, in these trees is where Simon Smith and Mary Ann McKean Smith lived from about 1855. That's when their first child in Stowe was born. And it was child number four, and they had a total of 11 children, um, from four to 11, all being born in Stowe. The cemetery is behind this in the field, 
Haven't been here for about 10 years, so we'll take a walk down. I'm not sure if we'll find anything or not. Evidently, there was a cellar. Uh, have no idea how big the house might have been. It's all grown up now. You can just see the remains of some split stones and, and rocks. This would have been a bulkhead entryway going in. Chances are the house probably only had a cellar under one end of it and the rest of it set on top of the ground. But there is nothing left and no indications of you know how big the house might have been. In fact, unless you knew that this was a cellar hole, you'd have to come on it to even realize that there was anything here. See some of the rocks standing on the side. Kind of looking down into it and pulling a tree sideways. Pine tree growing right in the middle. This is actually looking back towards the road. We'll see now if we can find the cemetery. Old. Um, it looks like a little driveway of sorts. It is mowed. Uh, I believe this will take us into the cemetery. We'll kind of make a bend. I believe it sits up there on the knoll. It cannot be seen from the road. Unless you know where it is, you'll probably never find it. A little bit of cl closer, you can see some, some stones now. Cemetery is mowed. Stone here. This is the cemetery that Simon and Marianne McKean Smith are in. This is their son Herbert, son of Marianne, Simon and Marianne Smith, aged 16 years, 10 months. Ah, uh, Company B, 32nd Regiment, Maine. Can't read that. Wounded at Coal Harbor, June 3rd, 1864. Died in Baltimore, Maryland, June 23rd, 1864, at National um, Something Hospital. Look at this stone. It says William H. Smith, 1868 to 1950. His wife, Lila, 1870 to 1930. This is the big stone kind of in the middle of the cemetery. side of the stone, I'm not sure if we can read it or not, it says Simon Smith died June 26, 1901, aged 79 years, 8 months and 26 days. And just below it, it says Mary Ann Smith, wife of Simon Smith, died April 25, 1903, aged 79 years, 10 months and 25 days. We'll see who some of the other ones are. Side of the big stone, there's a stone to the left that says father, and one that says mother. I assume that to be Simon Smith and Mary Ann McKean Smith. Uh, the big stone, this one says William H. Smith. He would have been a son of Simon and Mary Ann. Lila, his wife. Uh, then we have one that says Fred E. Smith son of William Smith died I'm not sure February 26 1913 really read the age it might say eight months and 21 days um, I'm not sure stone timber move please it says Ella S, daughter of Simon and Mary A. Smith, 1864 to 190. Um, this grave right here in front of the big stone is all sunken. This one here says Arthur. This one says Betsy. This one says Salmon. Salmon being a son of Simon and Mary Ann. Uh, Clara M., daughter of J.B. and H.E. Smith, 1892-1895. Uh, 
Henry Etta Smith, 1855-1924, and Jerome B. Smith, 1850-1923. Here there's one that says Marshall Smith, November 4th, 1855 to January 5th, 1921. There's another one, a marker on the ground that says Ann, or Anna, A-N-N-E, age 12 years, leave, says 12 years, uh, doesn't say anything else. I would assume it's probably a daughter of Marshall. I'm sure there possibly are some others buried in here, but this is all the stones. Um, and we've just read all the names. From the cemetery, this would be looking towards the road. Stations too. The birch trees that you see right there. I'm standing in the walkway to the cemetery is where the cellar hole of Simon and Mary Ann's house is. So this basically was the Simon and Mary Ann Smith Cemetery. Um, sure it's all relatives in there. I know it is. I'm sure there's some that are in there that have no markers, babies that died, young children. This will take you back out to the road uh, north of the house on the Union Hill Road, of the remains of the house. In the road, there's the entrance to the cemetery, swinging actually towards the south now. That would have been where the house stood continue going and there's a little red house that was once owned by William Smith the lawns are still being mowed so someone still uses it as a summer place probably that's the, the house of William Smith and this is where the Simon Smith house would have been with the cemetery kind of being directly in the back. Five tenths of a mile down the road headed south on the Union Hill Road is a, a turn to the right that kind of cuts back. And up in there, oh I don't know, two three hundred yards is the remains of the James Smith house. There's a camp going in on the left-hand side. I'm not sure who lives there. Uh, but a couple of weeks ago, I went up in there, and the picture of this house is um, earlier on this video. But we're still on Tar Road. Uh, it will change to dirt here shortly. And then we'll go a couple miles, possibly, to the old Hodgson house. But this is the entrance to the old James Smith house off the Union Hill Road. Houses in the process of now being torn down to be reconstructed in Massachusetts. This man here says that the house had to be built in the middle 1700, 1750 or so. It was originally called the Block House where people came to be protected from the Indians. I gave him a photocopy copy of the picture that Nat has. <laughs> You're on Kenneth. No. Home video. Taking the timbers out. Say they'll have this all done. Down, I'd say. This man says that uh, there was a floor. This guy right here is the one that's in charge.
it's gonna hit because you're sticking out past if you want to roll it. It's up in the air though. It's up four inches on the block. Just roll it once over. Twice, actually. The man says he found on the wall behind a piece of clearboard stuff. A piece of newspaper that said 1838. The paper said 1838. I asked him if he was going to keep it, and he said he sure was. They got a fire in the fireplace here trying to keep warm. Believe it or not, this is the corner that the one receptacle was in. It was put in after Anna and Ed Hodgson left, and they left in 46. The remains of the cellar and the stairs that go upstairs. This would have been the kitchen area. Alright. I gotta put this fireplace going and people won't believe me <laughs> when I show them the video. decided to cover the wall with a newspaper. Foundations weren't very good, you know. They're just stone. Laid the down. rocks, yeah. They, things start moving around. Frost and, and everything uh, else. And that's why, in fact, the whole. Joyce is cutting. Last one, I got it on the right side, Rick. I, I see that.
being able to look when I was down the cellar, um, it appears that probably the floor, the cellar was dug first because it kind of goes right straight down. But it definitely was a block house built in the mid 1750s for protection. Possibly people came here and stayed till they got their own places built. You see, that's what they usually did. And then they would you know, move out, but it gave them a place to live with their families while they were building their houses. He says on the top of these, um, and I won't be here that long to see them, are the, where the roof rafters set into it. Then they took them off, raised the roof about three feet, which you can see in the chimney. Let's look at the old house. She'll be gone for six days now. We've come back down and just got another row off.
This is the house that Edward and Anna, Edward and Georgiana, bought together. It's just on the corner, Union Hill Road, above, keep going beyond everybody else's. But I think uh, Ed and Anna lived here for a while. But originally it was bought by Edward and Georgiana. Their mother, Sarah, lived here. And right on the corner. This is what remains after the contractors removed what they wanted. I don't know if I take this and then just... Right on top of the ground. Yeah. You ever remember sitting on them rocks? This is all that remains. Still say that originally this was just set on top of the ground. Probably it was a block house with a dirt floor. Then later on they cut into the bottom timber, put some stringers across, 
and put a floor in it for the simple reason that the floorboards do not go to the outside wall. I'm saying the chimney probably was there in the beginning for heat and that the cellar was dug afterwards. 